hope aspirants uh, today's class is going to be very useful for many examinations so if you are a bsc student or an msc student for both of you this class is very important today we are going to discuss some of the topics of the magnetism which especially the students does not care about the first time then when we studied the magnetism was in class 12th and we studied the basics like what is magnetic field biot severt's law ampere circuit law and how do we use them these questions used to be in the exam but nowadays the trend of the exam has been changing especially in terms of magnetism and today i'm going to discuss especially a, remaining the focus on the scientific officer as we know that there are three ways we can get into a scientific officer barc exam is there upsc geophysics is there and gate physics is there in all of these three examinations and if i also add csir net and jam examination in all of these five examinations magnetism questions are very important if i talk about this gate physics exam and upsc geophysics exam and barc exam there has never been a paper without a question from a magnetism especially in the last 5 years especially if you talk about the gate physics every year you see the question level is changing and the difficulty level is also changing in upsc geophysics also there is a large number of questions from magnetism so today we will discuss something about the off topics of magnetism for example how does magnetism behaves in materials if we go into some different materials what are the different magnetic properties and also we will study about a very crucial parameter which is known as magnetic moment and magnetic vector potential so i have decided to teach you this topic through previous year problems which is gate physics pyq questions i will only solve the last five year problems but you will see in last five year itself there have been nine questions from these two topics this magnetism itself so in the gate in last five years you see nine questions from magnetism and we will discuss all of them with the detailed concept required in those questions also with every problem we will update a formula sheet so that in the end of the questions we have a formula sheet which we can revise any time to have a quick revision although i am solving gate pyqs but these concepts are applicable for all the examinations and very important for all the exams okay so let's begin with our problem number 1 which was asked in 2024 okay so i will explain each and every concept which will be there which is being used in this problems so the question is something like this let's try to analyze there is an infinitely long cylinder so you have a cylinder which is infinite in length and the radius r it carries a frozen magnetization so first of all we will talk about this term magnetization what is this magnetization thing okay. so magnetization is defined as magnetic moment per unit volume what is magnetic moment so whenever your material has north and south it always have north and south magnetic monopoles do not exist alone whenever you have north you will have south now you have multiple ways to have north and south one way is current if you have the current you will have magnetic field and you will have anti clockwise current as north clockwise current as south right so one way of getting the magnetic dipoles dipoles two poles is to have a current but current is not always required for magnetic moment or for the dipoles some materials itself has magnetic moment these are known as the magnetic materials or we can have many other ways to induce magnetism in any material so in any material we can have magnetism from the two sources one is through the current you give the current and you get a magnetism we are not interested in that regime in this question at least and the second is because of the materials properties the material itself has some magnetic properties that is why you are seeing north and south in the material north pole south pole the magnet get magnetized basically your material is magnetically active right so you have a magnetization in your material that is very important now magnetization is defined as magnetic moment per unit volume i will teach you entire concept that how do you calculate magnetic moment when the right question will come but magnetic moment is just a one parameter if we want to define magnetic moment for entire material 
what you need is magnetic moment per unit volume and whenever you do magnetic moment per unit volume you get a quantity known as magnetization and the magnetization is given to you so what is the magnetization which is being given to me it is k e to power minus s into z cap so let's understand this uh, mathematical expression k is some constant s is a distance from the axis so this is your cylinder axis so if you go from in this direction this is s so s is the distance from the axis and the direction of this is j cap or z cap so you can see that your magnetic movements or your magnetization is along the z axis as you can see from this uh, vector and as you go away from the axis as you increase your s as you increase your s your magnetization is decreasing so magnetization keeps on decreasing that is why you see the vectors are getting smaller and smaller so basically what does this formula tells me that first the magnetization is along z axis it means this side will be north and this side will be south magnetization always goes from uh, north to south you can say oh sorry reverse south to north just like a electric dipole it always goes dipole movement always goes from negative to positive similarly magnetization magnetic moment or magnetization also goes from so south to north it means this side is south and other side is north and as you go away from the axis the magnetization keeps on reducing so we have understood the meaning of magnetization magnetic moment per unit volume magnetic moment means two two uh, poles are there north and south they are separated so our material is magnetically active okay fine so it is given to us and we understood its meaning okay now the next thing is the magnetic permeability of a free space so you know every material has some permeability and for free space it is new not there is no free current present anywhere so as i told you there are two ways to magnetize a material one is through the material itself and another is through the current so we are magnetizing through the material because there is no current which is present in there so the current is zero now what they are asking is what is a magnetic flux density inside the cylinder so let's understand two more definitions before we get into the question the second definition that i want to understand is current density current density is defined as current per unit cross section area cross section area is a area which is perpendicular to the current so let's say the your current is flowing along the axis so now you have two areas in the cylinder one is the curved area and one is the flat area so which area will you choose you will choose flat area because flat area is perpendicular to the current however the curved area is parallel to the current that is why we will choose the flat area we will choose a cross sectional area so the current per unit cross sectional area is defined as current density j and the unit for this is amperes per meter square current by area in our cylinder as we have in example the current is i and the area will be pi r square because the area of the flat side which is a disk is pi r square and the current is going along the axis so it is k cap or you can even say z cap whatever you want to give the name okay in this question j is zero because there is no current which is flowing so in our problem j is zero but we should know what is j as such okay sometimes we also call it as a free j free means this is a free currents which are moving right the last is magnetic flux density so far you know this from the name of magnetic field always in your life you might have called b as magnetic field but b the true definition of b is magnetic flux density magnetic flux density is the how many number of magnetic field lines are passing through any material per unit area so it basically tells you that is your material liking the magnetic field or is it repelling the magnetic field so if no magnetic field passes through it it means it is not liking the magnetic field 
but if many magnetic field lines passing through the material it means your material loves magnetic field so the number of magnetic field lines per unit area passing through any material is the technical definition of b that is why b is also known as magnetic flux density or commonly known as magnetic field clear so these are the three definitions so what is given to us m is given to me j is given to me and b they are asking so how can i go from magnetization to b using the concept of j or something so that is what we will learn in this now before i enter into it we need to have some formulas ready with us to solve such quality of problems whenever we know that this question belongs to the magnetism in materials we will use this concepts so one thing that we have to change is ampere's law so ampere's law will have to be changed so we studied ampere's law in the free space when there was currents were there and so on so we studied that and we studied that in magnetism now we need to write ampere's law in materials how will the ampere's law behave inside the material clear so first of all let's have a very quick discussion about ampere's law ampere's law says that okay take any loop so let's say i take any loop theek hai and i am taking this loop so then this is okay do the line integration of this loop so theek hai magnetic field b dot dl so i am doing the line integration over a closed loop so loop should be closed so this should be equal to nu not times current enclosed so whatever is a current passing through this loop should be taken so let's say there is a 2 ampere current which is here so this current is outside the loop so we will not take it but if you take this 1 ampere current then this is a enclosed current this is passing through the loop or loop is closing closing this current that is why this will be part of the i enclosed so this is very similar to the gauss law but uh, it is very entirely different concept so this is an ampere's law we are familiar with theek hai this law basically tells you that magnetic field is due to current so this law says that if you have magnetic field you should have current that is why it works very nicely in magnetism but now we have to introduce new concept where we says that magnetic field is not only because of the current but it can also be because of the material's magnetization my material might be magnetized itself like polar molecules you know in polar molecules positive and negative charges are already separated similarly in the ferromagnetic materials paramagnetic materials north pole and south pole may exist already we found may we may found material magnet itself from the nature so we have to combine both the properties one is the current and another is the magnetization so now i will say that my magnetic field is actually because of the both so hence my ampere's law become h dot dl so b dot dl will become h dot dl equals to i free this is your ampere's law in metal what is h and what is i free i free is the free current whatever current is freely flowing inside the material is known as i free and h is the new parameter which i am defining so h is known as a magnetic field intensity magnetic field intensity and h has a definition of 1 by b by nu not minus m so these are the two formulas which will go to our formula sheet and i have already updated the formula sheet so you will find these two formulas in your formula sheet and they are the most important so if someone in an interview or ask you in brc interview or a upsc interview when you or a phd interview when you go and they ask you how will you change ampere's law in a material so what is the conceptual thing that you are changing ki now the magnetic field is because of both material and current and what is the mathematical thing that you will change you will replace b by h and you will say h dot dl integration equals to nu not i free and where h you will see contains both the things one is b as well as magnetization m so these are the very important and the crucial role 
So now I will just complete the calculation because now my theory is there with me and now I have all the rights to solve this problem. So let's begin. Number one thing that I learned is that I free is zero because there is no free current as I learned. So H is also zero. H goes to, because if this side is zero, then H will be zero. So magnetic field intensity is zero in our question. If I put H zero in this, I will get B equals to nu naught M. So my B will be equals to nu naught M. And M I already know is equals to K into E to power minus S into J cap. So all I have to do is multiply nu with it, nu naught with it. So once I multiply nu naught with it, I get this answer, which is my option number C. So my option number C comes out to be correct. So if there is no free current uh, in this quotient, especially the H goes to zero. If H goes to zero using this formula, B is nu naught M and you just multiply nu naught with M and you get magnetic flux density B from M. And that was our purpose and we got our answer correct, which is C. So now I will uh, take your questions or doubts for this question. So now we will move to the next problem. So now we have a good foundational basic to begin with. Now we understand the three things we have defined in the previous problem. B, H, M, and what is the relation between these three parameters and how do you write a Ampere's law in a matter? All of these formulas have been combined and summarized in the formula sheet in the first page. Now let's go for the question number two, which is taken by the examiner directly from the Griffiths. So here I want to give you your first homework for this lecture. So if you open up your Griffiths book and you go for chapter number six, which is magnetism in matter, you should do all the solved examples of that chapter, at least first three to four solved examples and whatever the questions you found similar to that, because you will realize that this question has been directly taken from that book. The direct results of that book has been asked in the options. And this has not just been the first time when this has been done. Griffiths is a very standard book and all the questions are directly or indirectly from that book itself. Even the first uh, question we did is very much nicely explained in the Griffiths book. So this is going to be your homework and let's begin with the problem and understand. That. So this is consider an isolated magnetized sphere. So now they have a sphere. Isolated means that it is not interacting with the surrounding in any way. And the radius is R and the magnetization is M and this is uniform. Uniform means that it is same at all the positions. Wherever you go inside a sphere, magnetization is same. Okay. And the good way to draw this magnetization is this. Whenever you want to represent magnetic fields you or draw magnetic fields or electric fields, you have two ways. Either you can make vectors. Okay, uh, this is a vector. This is a vector. It means both the magnetic fields are same because both the vectors have the same length. But if this is a vector and second is this, then I can say the magnetic field at this point is more and magnetic field at this point is less because both the vectors have different length. But sometimes drawing so many vectors is not possible. Then we choose lines to draw. So here I have, I'm drawing the magnetic field using the lines. So I'm making the lines. So if lines are equally spaced, so you see the spacing between these two lines are not changing. It means the magnetic field is same everywhere. If the spacing between the lines remain same, the magnetic field remains same. If the spacing between the lines increases, magnetic field decreases. Spacing increases, magnetic field decreases. On the other hand, if lines come closer, the magnetic field become longer. Okay. Magnetic, uh, magnetic field become smaller. Okay. So that is the case. So magnetic field lines and the distance are actually inversely proportional to each other. Clear. So that is one of the, uh, one of the very good criteria you need to understand. How do you draw and visualize the fields? Here we are visualizing using the concept of lines, but here the magnetic field is uniform. So what I'm saying here is that lines will be equally spaced, which is, you can see from the diagram. 
that is a good concept we understood now next next part it is along the z axis yes if they come closer flux increases so magnetic field also increases so closer means increase so, so distance decrease b increase distance increase b decrease opposite closer means more magnetic field far means less magnetic clear another idea is that they are along the positive z direction so you can clearly see that in an in a sphere this is defined as a z axis so you can clearly see that your magnetization is along the z axis so from there we can very simply say that this is a south pole and this is a north pole because it is going from south to north right uh, yes so south and north pole are lying on the z axis that we also covered now the question it is given that the magnetic field inside the sphere is this so magnetic field is given to you although this formula you should remember although this is given to you in this problem but you should remember this formula always and this is going to be our formula for this question ki what is the different different parameters for a uniformly magnetized sphere and this is a solved example of griffith so griffith has a solved example in which they says that what is the fields because of the uniformly magnetized sphere if you go for its derivation it is available but the problem in that case is that you have to use so much of mathematics to get to the results which you can do one one time if, if this could be your homework you can try the that one time but you should at least remember the results always ki if you have a uniformly magnetized sphere what are the results that i need to keep in mind and this question has been repeated many times in different different examples okay so let's see magnetic field in this case is given by 2 nu not by 3 into m so this is a very important formula if the m is uniform then you can say the b is also uniform so inside the material magnetic field is also uniform it is not it is same everywhere because m is same everywhere and the multiplying factor is 2 nu not by 3 clear very nice and m is already given to you which is m not into j cap z cap theek okay? hai because m not why m not because it is uniform z cap why because it is along the z axis so these two are the things which are given to you but this formula sh you should also remember and this has been added to your formula sheet very nice now what are the, they are asking so they are asking in the first two options they are asking two things what is the bound volume current density and what is the bound surface current density here the wordings are very confusing and this has always confused me whenever i try to study this why this is confusing because you can see they are using the word bound current current is always a flowing thing then how can the current be bound there is no such thing as bound current it is our attempt to reduce our efforts let me explain that so now we studied that magnetism is because of the two parameters one current another magnetic material now i usually like to work with currents because i have studied the entire chapter of magnetism dealing with the currents so when the magnetic properties appear i feel little uncomfortable so rather than dealing with the magnetic properties i say okay let's find the analog current analog current means rather than studying the magnetic properties directly i will study some analog current which will produce the same magnetic field which this material is producing so let's say i give you the material and say okay 10 tesla magnetic field this material produce but now you don't know how to deal how to study magnetic materials so you find a easy approach so you say okay let's let's convert this material into some sort of analog current and that analog current will also produce the same amount of magnetic field so there is nothing known as you can say is the bound currents ki current are bound they are within the material no it is just like that we give the name current to the magnetic properties of the material it's a just a name that we are giving because both magnetic properties and both current give rise to magnetic field 
so rather than changing the theories again and again we let the light in, enjoy by saying that okay let's convert magnetic properties also into analog current and whenever we current in, convert into analog currents we say two analog currents one is the bound volume current density and one is the bound surface current density okay and this is also going to be your another homework there is a very beautiful article written in griffiths uh formulas i will share you so you will know which terms to focus on but i will rather like you to read the diagrams available there read the text it is hardly 3 pages so today in chapter number 6 you can spend some time in studying this uh two or three pages on bound current density and volume current density so what are the formulas which are available for us to use bound volume current density is given by jb vector and jb vector is given by del cross m so it is a curl of m in our problem m is uniform so if you take the curl of a uniform thing because basically curl is a differentiation three dimensional differentiation so if you take a differentiation of a constant thing you are going to get is zero so in our case volume current density bound volume current density is going to come out as zero so let's see what is our first option bound volume current density is zero so option number a is correct it's a multiple select question so a is correct then let's move to the next one then we go for the bound surface current density surface current density is defined as m cross n n cap n cap is a direction perpendicular to the surface so if you have a sphere the perpendicular to the surface is r cap r cap means radially outwards so when you go radially outwards on the surface you are perpendicularly cutting the surface right so in our case the formula is going to be m cross n cap theek okay? hai so this is your bound surface current density so let's try to understand what will be that so m is you see in m is m not into j z cap and then n cap is r cap so now we have to do j z cap cross r cap so you know whenever you do the cross product you say a b sin theta a is the magnitude of the first vector so since this is a unit vector so its magnitude will be 1 its magnitude will also be 1 and then sin theta so what is an angle between j and r theta we so we say that this angle, we know that this angle is theta in spherical polar coordinate system we define this angle with z axis as theta so we will say it is m sin theta so sin theta comes from here m coming from here and then we can also find the direction you know in the uh, in the cylindrical coordinate system or in a in a you can say in a uh, basically if you do z cross r you are going to get is phi cap you are going to get is rotated so because z cross r is going to give you phi in cylindrical polar coordinate system you have r phi and z if you do z cross r you get phi which is a rotation okay so you are basically have a, a rotation kind of thing this kind of scenario and it changes with theta it means here the magnetic here the surface bound charge density will be different here it will be different here it will be different so as you change theta it is going to change it is going to change and its direction is going to be along phi cap means rotatory its direction is rotatory and it changes with the angle so on the poles it is different on the equator it is different so this is our relation and we should you should know this on the fingertips ki okay, how to find volume current density how to find surface current density for a uniformly magnetized sphere this is one of the most important derivation of all time from this chapter clear now uh, let's go ahead and let's see what is been asked in the question so they are asking that what is the bound surface charge density has a maximum magnitude at the equator is it true is it true that it has a maximum value at equator so at equator the angle is 90 degree so yes sin 90 is maximum so yes at equator this thing will be maximum because sin theta is maximum at 90 degree 90 degree angle means you are at equator because poles is 0 degree and equator is 90 degree so the second option also comes out to be correct 
कि सरफेस बाउंड चार्ज डेंसिटी इज एक्चुअली मैक्सिमम एट द इक्वेटर एंड इट इज मिनिमम और जीरो एट द पोल्स सो द टू थिंग्स वी लर्न वेरी स्पेसिफिकली वॉल्यूम बाउंड चार्ज डेंसिटी सो दिस इज अ फॉर्मूला बाउंड सरफेस करंट डेंसिटी दिस इज अ फॉर्मूला ठीक है एंड वी सॉल्व बोथ द फॉर्मूलास एंड वी गॉट द आंसर्स नाउ कम्स अ थर्ड थिंग द ऑक्सिलरी रिलेशन बिटवीन एच एंड एम what is the relation between h and m the relation between h and m is actually where is it minus 1 by 3 m i am going to quickly prove this up for you so let me add another page and i am going to quickly or let me do it here i will find the relation between h and m okay so you know the relation h is equals to 1 by nu not into b Minus m. This is a formula we studied in the last question. What is the b given to me? And also you should remember this. The b remember to given to me is two by three nu not m. So two by three nu not m minus m h. So you can clearly see it will be one by three into m. So h is always equals to minus one by three into m. Again. very very important formula to remember keep in mind ki b is 2 by 3 nu not m h is minus 1 by 3 m theek hai if you cannot remember it you can quickly derive it as i have done so h is actually minus 1 by 3 m but it is given minus 2 by 3 m so option number c is absolutely wrong and now comes the last thing which is actually a fact based question you were not supposed to solve this in an exam you should have must have been remember this so whoever is tried to solve this is an exam will fail because this is a fact based question which came from the griffiths solved example so you should keep in mind what is it so they says that far from the sphere the magnetic field is due to the dipole moment so basically they are saying that if you go far away from the sphere your sphere will behave like a dipole south and north just like that it will just behave like a magnetic dipole that's it so this fact is true and it is even given in the statement in the griffiths the last statement is itself for it ki your this material behaves like a dipole and the magnetic field is same as a dipole's magnetic field but now in some other years in future the question can be extended ki okay i agree that magnetic field is due to dipole it is behaving like a dipole but what is the magnetic field exactly what is the value of magnetic field so for that purpose i am giving you the two formulas one you already know is 2 by 3 nu not m this is inside the material but if you go outside the material it is nu not m by 4 pi r cube 2 cos theta r cap plus sin theta theta cap again uh, sir do we need to remember this yes because in one of the question in 2016 or 15 somewhere this formula has been came in gate examination so any formula of this derivation should not be avoided at any any um, scenario so outside magnetic field depends inversely on r cube and inside magnetic field is uniform everywhere it is same so that is the main basic nature here inside magnetic field is same uniform everywhere outside it is decreasing by 1 by r cube ठीक है एंड व्हाट इज दिस स्मॉल एम आई आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू मैग्नेटाइजेशन इज मैग्नेटिक मूवमेंट डिवाइडेड बाय वॉल्यूम एंड वॉल्यूम इज 4 बाय 3 पाई आर क्यू सो दिस स्मॉल एम इज एक्चुअली अ मैग्नेटिक मूवमेंट ठीक है सो दिस स्मॉल एम इज अ मैग्नेटिक मूवमेंट बिकॉज़ मैग्नेटाइजेशन इज मैग्नेटिक मूवमेंट पर यूनिट वॉल्यूम सो कैपिटल एम इज अ मैग्नेटाइजेशन स्मॉल एम इज अ मैग्नेटिक मूवमेंट मैग्नेटिक मूवमेंट वी विल आई विल टीच यू हाउ टू कैलकुलेट इन next two or three questions theek okay? hai so this is your magnetic field now in electric field also we get the similar results in chapter number 4 of griffiths where they study the electric fields in materials there they also have the similar formulas that what is the electric field due to uniformly polarized material one is uniformly magnetized material one is uniformly polarized sphere in that case also the formulas are very similar that electric field is not 2 by 3 nu not m, oh sorry uh, h is not minus 1 by 3 m it is electric field is minus p by 3 epsilon not 
and electric field outside will be p by 4 pi epsilon naught r cube and then this thing remains same 2 cos theta r cap plus sin theta theta cap even this question has been came in the exams and it is very easy to remember electric fields in terms of this magnetic field because both are giving you the similar results okay so whatever uniformly polarized material do in electric field same thing uniformly magnetized material do in magnetic field okay so what are the things i need to keep in mind what is the relation between b and m what is the relation between h and m what is the volume bound current density what is the surface bound current density and what is the electric field in sorry magnetic field inside and magnetic field outside clear so these are the few things we need to keep in mind so fourth option for this is also correct so one a b and d are correct c is going to be the wrong option in this one because that does not match with our exact option okay so now any uh, doubts for this problem please so the most important question uh, which is going to be there and this question is very important for the lower uh, exams as well for example cvt and jam exams so the exam level uh, this question can be directly asked in there so be very carefully available for this so what is going to happen in this problem and what is the problem exactly do we have so this sets consider a solenoid so very quickly let's understand what is solenoid so solenoid is a very simple thing it is a cylinder some cylinder which is made up of some sort of magnetic materials and there is a wire which is swirling around it and the current is there in a wire because of that current the magnetic field is there inside the solenoid this is known as a solenoid solenoid has a length l and it has a radius r and r is much much less than l so we can consider it as a infinite solenoid you always remember there are whenever the solenoid becomes finite the problem starts to emerge okay that is a different sort of problem we will discuss some other day but for our purpose having an infinite solid is very important usually especially to do this problem and this is an infinite solid because radius is much smaller than the length now the steady current is flowing through the solenoid so some current flows through the solenoid and the magnetic field inside the solenoid is uniform and outside it is zero so let's first of all talk about the magnetic field due to solenoid so magnetic field due to solenoid is actually nu not n i if you are inside and it is zero if you are outside nu not is nu not n is the number of turns per unit length how many number of turns are there how many circles you have divided by length is going to give you small n small n is number of turns per unit length i is the current and if you go outside the solenoid magnetic field is zero another important thing is that this magnetic field is along axis so magnetic field is along going to be along k cap or z cap so magnetic field is always along the axis and it is uniform you see there is no dependence on x y or z so magnetic field is not changing with x y and z it is same everywhere inside the solenoid perfect okay perfect now what they are asking they are asking among the given options choose the best which represents the variation of vector potential magnetic vector potential as a function of radial distance means as you go from the axis of the cylinder so now we need to understand two things what is magnetic vector potential so this is a definition of magnetic vector potential del cross a will give you magnetic so a vector is some vector such that if you take the curl of this you will get magnetic so the curl of magnetic vector potential always gives you magnetic so b is equal to del cross a now the problem is that i already know what is b i need to know a how to do this reverse calculation and what i am going to teach you is applicable for entire physics you already know if you know a and you have to find b then you can easily do you can do the curl and you can find b but now i am asking the reverse that i give you a i don't know a but i need to know b so how to go reverse theek okay? hai and uh, that is what i am going to teach you so in that case you use the stokes theorem theek okay? hai so whatever you want to find 
just take the line integration of that. So you say a dot DL closed integration. Now you can use the Stokes theorem that whenever you have a closed theorem, you can return it. You can write it as del cross a into area integration. So instead of doing line integration of a, you can do the surface integration of del cross a. So you do del. This is exactly what is Stokes theorem is. I am using the Stokes theorem here. So a dot dl is going to be del cross a dot dl. Del cross a is what b. So you get b dot dl. So this is what I will use to find a. So what I am going to use is a dot dl is going to be b dot dl. And whenever you have such scenario where you have to find this and you know this, the same stock theorem you use and in any branch of physics. Clear? So now let's use it. So now I will imagine a solenoid. So I'm not drawing these circles just to so that I do not get confused up or my diagram do not get bulky. So I imagine a solenoid. The radius of the solenoid is capital R. Now I have to take a loop. So what kind of loop I should say? So I will take a circular loop. So first of all, I take a circular loop and I curl my A. So A dot DL. Okay. So my A vector is also rotating. My DL vector is also rotating. So A dot DL will become A into 2 pi R. Okay. Let me do this. A dot DL is A DL cos theta my a vector rotating that is my assumption i am assuming that my a vector is swirling and in the end i will think okay maybe it is true and why i am assuming that because in the question itself you can see they are asking a5 a5 means rotating a so your magnetic field vector is along z axis so your magnetic vector potential will be along the phi so your vector potential is rotating, magnetic field is along z-axis. Okay. Another one way of thinking is ki, rotating A give rise to the axial B. So magnetic field is axial, magnetic vector potential is rotating. Okay. So your A vector is rotating, your loop is rotating. So what is an angle between A and DL? Zero. Loop and A both are rotating. So angle between them is zero. So cos zero is one. So you are left with this a dl. Now you can take a common and dl becomes a into two pi r. So that is why a dot dl becomes a into two pi r. What about b dot dl? What about b dot dl? So b u b dot dl means b d a cos theta. You know this is your loop. What is the area vector? Area vector is perpendicular. Area vector is always perpendicular to the area. And your magnetic field is also going in the same direction because magnetic field is also going along the axis. So B and A are also in the same direction. So cos zero is gone. B you can take common and integration of small area is the total area. So it is B into pi r square. So this is going to be B into pi r square. Then I can put my value of B. So value of B will be nu naught n i into pi r square. And then I can make this thing and this thing equal as I saw in the formula. So if I make these two equal, my a vector comes out to be nu naught n i small r by 2 into phi cap. Okay? Into phi cap. So this is going to be your formula for magnetic vector potential inside the solenoid. But if you're outside the solenoid, then only thing that will change here is that instead of using pi small r square, you will say pi capital R square. Why? Because your magnetic field is only till the solenoid. Outside the solenoid, there is no magnetic. Your magnetic field exists only till the capital R, which is the radius of the solenoid. So you are trying to find the A at the distance small r. And now this small r is outside the solenoid. So this small r is outside the solenoid. So you do A into 2 pi r. But now your magnetic field is not till small r, right? Your magnetic field is only till capital R. That is why instead of writing pi into small r square, you write pi into capital R square. Then your formula becomes a vector is equal to nu naught n i capital R square by 2r into phi cap. So what do I learn? That inside my a is directly proportional to r and outside my a is inversely proportional. So my graph is going to be 
increase linearly decrease hyperbolically linear hyperbola and this graph is going to be my option number c and the two most important formula i have derived from this and one technique i have learned from this ki if b is del cross a i need to find a and i need b i use stokes theorem that is a technique two formulas that i learn is that what is the magnetic vector potential due to solenoid so first thing i to learn is magnetic vector potential will be curling so that it give rise to magnetic field which is axial and then i learn that what is my magnetic field inside it is directly proportional to r and what is my magnetic field outside it is inversely proportional to r these formulas are very important sometimes they directly ask you what is ma magnetic vector potential inside so you need to know exact this formula to solve the mathematics so this was your question number 3 any doubt in this one please ask okay now the next problem which was again from the magnetic materials so we again will go back to the magnetic materials and whatever we learned now this question might confuse some people but let's be very clear about that a material is placed in a magnetic field intensity h so you place a material in a h as i was saying that you sometimes you place your material in h as a result some bound current density comes so basically material get magnetized and the magnetization of the material is m theek okay? hai and the magnetic flux density is b so you have to see that which of the del dot products or the which of the divergences will be zero one thing that we always know is that del dot b is zero for any magnetic system of this universe it does not matter which magnetic system you are dealing with del dot b is 110% always zero and the reason being because del dot b tells you that magnetic monopoles do not exist so if someone ask you what does the meaning of del dot b equals to zero del dot b equals to zero means that magnetic monopoles does not exist if you have north pole you must have south pole if you have south pole you must have north pole north cannot exist alone south cannot exist alone that is the what this theorem means it also tells you that magnetic flux through any closed surface is always zero so let's say this is your closed surface and this is your magnetic material now this magnetic material will have north and south both so because of the north the field lines will go out and because of the south the field lines will go in so whatever is going out is coming in so the total flux is zero no net is going out no net is going in so the net flux is zero so the net flux of magnetic field is always zero so b dot da in a closed surface is always zero now you can use the greens divergence theorem b dot da it can be written as del dot b into dv and this is equals to zero if this is equals to zero it means del dot b is always equals to zero so one thing to learn here is that del dot b is always going to be zero we cannot change this fact so del dot b is zero statement b is correct another statement is that your del dot jb will always be zero this is always also zero first of all it is to obey the conservation laws and second mathematically also you can prove that because you know jb is del cross m we saw bound volume current density is del cross m and if you do the dot product of this sorry uh, the divergence of this then you can put del dot jb del jb ki uh, value you can put which is del cross n and you know that divergence of curl is always zero so divergence of curl is zero so del dot jb is always going to be zero so del dot jb is also zero so del dot b zero del dot jb always zero this is going to be zero always does not matter which system you are dealing with now we have to treat a and c and basically a and c will give you answers together so let's check now we will start with the formula of h you know the formula for h 1 by nu not b minus m now we take dot product on the both sides so we will get del dot h 1 by nu not del dot b minus del dot m right nu not is a constant that is why i took it out of del dot and you already know del dot b is zero so this is zero so del dot h is equals to minus del dot m so not necessarily zero because del dot m might be zero might not be zero if your magnetization is changing with 
position it will not be zero but if your magnetization is not changing with position it will be zero so we cannot say for sure ki del dot m will be zero or not magnetization might change with position magnetization might not change with position it might be a uniform magnetization it might be a non uniform magnetization so this thing can be non zero so if del dot m is non zero del dot h will also be non zero and if that is zero this will also be zero so in general we cannot say that both of them are zero yes they can be zero in some cases but not always so the true options for our this example is del dot b zero and del dot j b zero which are true always in all the cases theek okay? hai so that is going to be your two options which are correct in this case yes please go ahead and ask me the doubts for this uh, question so the next problem now we are shifting towards is a magnetic moment problems now whenever you have a material you have north pole you have south pole you have the separation of the poles basically you have a dipole dipole is known as a separation of the poles so whenever you have a dipole you need to define strength of the dipole and that is known as magnetic moment just like a dipole moment dipole moment defines the strength of the dipoles how strong is this dipole how strong is not positive negative charge and how well they are separated what is their how good dipole is this similarly magnetic moment defines the strength of the magnetic dipoles how strong are your north and south and how well they are separated so there are three definitions of magnetic moments which are required and we will do them one by one in each question theek okay? hai so let's do that so they are saying that far from the earth so we are far away from the earth the earth magnetic field can be approximated due to the bar magnet so you have a earth so earth can be assumed as a bar magnet having north pole and south pole so rather than dealing with earth as a sphere you can deal the earth as a bar magnet having the magnetic pole strength this so now let's understand what is this magnetic pole strength and what is this magnetic moment so let's have this comparison on the left hand side i have electrostatics case on the right hand side i have the magnetism case electro in electrostatics case you have charges q in magnetism you have pole strength m positive charge is plus q negative charge is minus q similarly uh north pole is plus m plus small m and uh, negative charge is south pole is minus small m electric dipole moment is defined as p is defined as charge into length similarly magnetic dipole moment will be defined as m into l where m is a pole strength so now we have understood three quantities so let me write this down number 1 is the pole strength which is small m it tells you how strong is your north or south then we have is a magnetic moment which is m it is defined as pole strength into the length between plus and minus ki how far are north and south from each other and then is the magnetization theek hai this is even more larger m theek hai matlab whatever you symbol you want to give it this is known as magnetic moment per unit volume where magnetic moment is m into l by volume theek okay? hai so magnetic moment per unit volume so these are the three things that we studied in this uh, class or in this chapter so pole strength north south magnetic moment how strong is this north south and how well they are separated and magnetization basically is for entire material what is the magnetic moment per unit volume okay so the one definition of magnetic moment comes as m into l so whenever you have magnetic dipoles because of the magnetic materials let's say you have material and because of the material you are getting the magnetization then you will write the formula small m into l but sometime you do not have magnetic moment due to materials you have magnetic moment due to currents because of the currents you are getting magnetic moment clockwise current north anti clockwise current south then you cannot use this formula then you have to use another formula which is known as i into a then the magnetic dipole moment becomes current into area 
So I is the current in the loop. A is the area of the loop. And that is how you define the current into area, which is known as magnetic dipole moment. So the two formulas we understood for magnetic dipole moment, one, because of the materials, which is small m into L, where small m is the strength of the poles and L is the length between them. And another formula is because of the current carrying loops, which is current into area. Another formula, there is third formula also, which we will do in next problem. But for now, there are two problems which we need, formulas we need in this problem. So let's read the statement now. So now they said, assume the magnetic field is generated by the current carrying loops. So let's read the question again. You have earth. Earth is a bar magnet. Bar magnet has a pole strength this. So small m is given to you. Now they says that assume this magnetic field is generated by a current carrying loop encircling the magnetic equator. Then what is the current required to do is? So they are saying that, okay, forget about magnet. If you want to produce the same amount of magnetic field due to the current carrying loop, and that loop is around the circle of the diameter of the earth, then how much current do you need to produce the same amount of magnetic field as the earth is producing? So two models are given together. One is that you can assume earth has bar magnet and pole strength is given to you. And second is rather than assuming earth has a bar magnet, take a circle around the earth and then tell that how much current is required so that circle produces the same magnetic field as produced by the bar magnet. So this is a question. So let's do it. So first of all, earth has a bar magnet. What will be the magnetic moment? Magnetic moment will be pole strength into length. So what is the length? So if this is north and this is south, the length between north and south will be two times r, which is diameter. So 2r. But if the earth is a circle, means you are taking a circle, then you have to use another formula, which is current into area. Because now the magnetic moment is because of the current. So then you say current into area. Area is pi r square. So you make both of them equal because magnetic moments should be same for both of them or magnetic fields should be same for both of them. So then you, what you do is uh, current you have to find. So what you can do is two M by pi R one R and one R cancels. Then you multiply divide by two. So you get four M by two pi R four M M is already given to you. Pole strength is given, which is four into 10 to power 40. So four into four will give you 16. And then this is the circumference. That is also given the earth circumference is four into 10 to the power seven. So you give four into 10 to the power seven. So if you divide them, you get four into 10 to the power seven. And they are asking this, what is four into 10 to the power N? What is four into 10 to the power N? So N is your seven. So seven is your final answer for this question. So one question revises both the formulas for magnet, magnetic movement because of the magnet and magnetic movement because of the current. We make both of them equal. We do the maths and we get the answer. Is it clear? And any doubt for this problem? Please go ahead. Okay. So now in this question, another formula of magnetic movement will come out. And that is, you see a solid cylinder of radius R has total charge Q, which is distributed over its volume. So you have a cylinder and this cylinder is uniformly charged and it has a total charge Q and it has a total radius of R. It is rotating. What is the magnitude of the total magnetic moment? So when the charged bodies rotate, they behave like a current because whenever the charge moves, they will behave like a current. So the rotating charge bodies actually start to behave like a current and they produces magnetic movement. Clear? How do we find the magnetic moment due to the rotating charged bodies? The formula here simplifies that M is equals to Q L by 2 M. This formula is also similar to the formula that you study in atomic physics in which the magnetic magnetic moment is directly proportional to the angular momentum. So Q is the charge. M is the mass. L is the angular momentum. Angular momentum can also be written as I omega, where I is not a current, I is movement of inertia. And omega is the rotation, rotational speed. 
you know linear momentum is mass into velocity so angular momentum is mass becomes inertia and v becomes omega so this is extremely important third formula for magnetic moment and you only need three formulas in your life for magnetic moment to calculate the magnetic moment for anybody ml for magnetic materials ia for current carrying loops q by 2m into l for rotating bodies now let's use the formula you know moment of inertia of the cylinder is mr square by 2 so i will just put the values i will say q by 2m inertia is mr square by 2 and then i have omega so simply i will get is 1 by 4 into q r square omega so this is going to be your option number c don't worry this formula has also been included in your formula sheet so this is another formula that you have to keep it yeah any doubt anyone uh, yes and then i will go for the next part of the last problem of today which is seventh problem so in this question they are saying that the vector potential inside the long solenoid so you see in one of the question they asked you to calculate this but in the 2019 question they have already given you that that a vector potential inside the solenoid with n turns per unit length carrying the current i is written this is already given to you and then they say that if you add another term in this vector potential the magnetic field remains same if so magnetic vector potential is not a unique thing remember that many vector potentials can give rise to the same magnetic field and that is one of the uh, play around which helps in solving some problems easily that is also we call it as a potential formulation because ultimately our goal is to get p magnetic field and there are many a vectors which can give rise to the same magnetic field this is one of the possible solutions okay if you have a solenoid the magnetic vector potential will be nu not ni by 2 s s is the distance from the axis and phi phi why because magnetic vector potential is rotating this is that okay if i add another term here my magnetic field remains same if which of these parameter is obeyed so my magnetic field should not change if i add this term to this term so basically it's a simple thing so i need to find my magnetic field magnetic field will remain same i already know my magnetic field it is nu not n i into z cap or k cap and i need to do del cross a so my a vector is made up of both of these and these two vectors have only two components one is a component along s cap and one is a component along phi cap what is the component of like s cap this is the component so nu not n i by 2 and then i have this s and then i have this term which is b sin phi so the s component of my a is this similarly what is my phi component so there are two phi components one is here and one is here so nu not n i by 2 can be taken common and s comes from here and from here it comes at s alpha cos phi s alpha cos phi so this is my s component this is my phi component i do not have any z component so that is zero now i need to do curl so i will do del cross a del cross a is b i already know and what i do is when i am solving the curl i can simplify a few things first of all i can take nu not n i by 2 common and how do you solve the curl in a cylindrical polar coordinate system so you divide by 1 by s outside then you make a determinant you write s cap s into phi cap and j cap then you write curly by curly s curly by curly phi and curly by curly z and then you write your s component then s into a phi component you don't just write a phi component you multiply s into a phi component so you have to multiply s here so nu not n i by s and one s can be taken common from here so it will become s square and then you get 1 plus alpha cos phi and then in the last there is no z component so zero so if you solve it out you will get z component from here only z component will be here only z component will be here and you will get this nu not n by 2 is common s is already common first you differentiate this with this so you get 2s into 1 plus alpha cos phi then minus then you differentiate this with this so you get s beta sin phi becomes cos phi right and then you know del cross a is magnetic field and magnetic field you know is nu not n i 
now i cancel unit ni on both sides so i get 1 by 2s and then s i can take common from here okay that I, that is what i have done here and then you get 2 into 2 alpha cos phi minus b cos phi then i can cancel s and s also then i can take two common as well so if you take two common you will get 1 plus alpha cos phi minus beta by 2 cos phi if you want this equation to hold you know alpha should be equals to beta by 2 So if alpha is equals to beta by two, you will get option number D as the correct answer. So this was more or less was the simple, direct, straightforward question. No conceptual additions are there. So we had vector potential. We added another term, and then our magnetic field should remain same. We just need to find the condition of alpha and beta with each other. Okay. So that is the situation that we. Have. So these were the seven questions, not nine. There are seven questions which have been asked in the last five years in the gate. uh from this magnetism topic okay in the very beginning of it i have given the formula sheet so this contains all the formulas you need to know and which we discussed today so none of this form uh, means all of these formulas are being used in some of the problems so i will like to end the close the section uh, session here and uh, yes any doubt in this today's lecture